Houston. You're in the picture with Jackie's guests, Jan Sterling, Arthur Treacher, Patricia Carroll, and Pat Harrington, Jr. And now, here's the head of our gallery, our catalyst, Jackie Gleason. <laughs> good group. <laughs> I want to thank you very much. As you noticed, Mr. Olson introduced me as a catalyst. For all of you people who don't know what a catalyst is, as soon as I look it up, I'll tell you. <laughs> now, we have some fine guests on our panel this evening, and I'd like to introduce them to you individually. First, we have Miss Jan Sterling. Mr. Arthur Treacher. <laughs> Miss Pat Carroll. <laughs> and Pat Harrington, Jr. <laughs> now, before we begin our game, I would like to introduce to you another celebrity, Kellogg. Take my word for it, ladies and gentlemen, Kellogg's cereals are a good group. They bring the best to you each morning. Now, take for instance, Kellogg's Corn Flakes. Over a million packages just like this every day are emptied by happy eaters because this one is the world's favorite. Now, if you haven't had these lately, do yourself a favor. Get with Kellogg's Corn Flakes. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we're ready for our game. It's a very simple game, and as soon as I explain it to you, I know you'll catch on immediately. We roll out some pictures. The panelists put their heads into holes that have been cut into the pictures. Now, they can't see what the picture is because we have a little collar under their chin. They try to guess what the content of the picture is or what they portray in the picture. Now, if they should guess a picture, we send 100 care packages in their name. If they should miss a picture, we send 100 care packages in my name. <laughs> so with this game, everybody wins, nobody loses. Now we're ready for the first game. Let's show the folks at home the picture. Kindly step in. <laughs> now there is a motley group. <laughs> this happens to be a historical event. And uh, as a clue, I might say that this is a slice of life. A what? A slice of life. Now, uh, we'll begin the uh, interrogation with you, Miss Carroll. Would I be considered, or would I be allowed as a guest at the inaugural ball tonight? I imagine you would, yes. Uh, would I be dressed in the modern costume? No, you wouldn't be dressed in a modern costume, no. Uh, is, am I uh, an individual uh, character in history? Well, you couldn't be a crowd. That's a cinch. Uh, well, I, I am an individual. Uh, is my period of history within the past 300 years? I'm sorry. Your time is up. And now we go on to Mr. Pat Harrington, Jr. Uh, um, I'm, do, am I doing anything with uh, food here? No. Um, uh, is you it, look like you're being choked by that thing. Get in a little further. Thank you very much. Now I'm subject. Um, am I, um, do, I have a, do, do I have a specific get-up? You say it's a slice of history. Do I have a specific outfit? Yes, you do. Uh, 
Does this, does this outfit uh, indicate my uh, trade? <laughs> well, if you were in the business of hair cutting, I guess it would, yes. <laughs> Is that, is it, was that a noise? No, no, I'm sorry. Your time is up. And now, Mr. Treacher. Am I a man? <laughs> yes, you are, but only for a short while. <laughs> Am I sitting down? No, uh, I'll uh, give you a little hint. You're kneeling down. Oh. Am I going to be beheaded? Oh. Yes, you sneak. Well, I just wondered. <laughs> You're well, going to be beheaded. Is that good enough? No, that's yeah. not good enough. All right. I'd like to know... Uh... Oh, oh, I'm sorry. But I thought done. all a bit, didn't I? Now we get to Jan Sterling. Is Arthur going to be beheaded by a, a knife? I guess you could call it a knife, yes. A guillotine? No, not a guillotine. A headsman's axe? Well, an axe. An axe? Mm -hmm. Slice, slice. Now, what you should try to get is who is going to do the job. Am I a male? Yes, you are. Am I uh, an executioner? Well, you will be as soon as you carry this thing out, if you get a chance to carry it out. <laughs> is this done uh, in a public square? I'm sorry, your time is up. I'll give you another clue. Uh, this probably could be the first illustration of Yankee Go Home. <laughs> You're absolutely right! I want to tell you something. Huh? The barber shop. Could you get a better haircut than that? Yeah, no. Jan Sterling is probably psychic. Uh... I, we are ready for our next game. Could we let the folks at home see the next picture? Would you step in, panel? This picture depicts a song title. Uh, three of you have a good head for figures. And the other adds up pretty good, too. Now, we'll start with you, Mr. Harrington. Am I a male? Yes, you are. Um, Quite a male. Really, yeah? Mm -hmm. um, do I... Um, would I attract any attention with the way I look, the way I'm dressed? Well, you'd like to, but uh, unfortunately, your attraction is being attacked. Uh... I got it, Jack. Uh... <laughs> That's why it's like this that you need John Daly. Uh, if I don't get this, are they going to pick up your option? <laughs> no. <laughs> Am I a... I'm sorry. We go to Jan Sterling. Am I a female? No, you're not. A male? That's correct. A small male? No, a large one. Uh, am I modern? Yes, you are a modern male. Am I doing something that you would do? <laughs> I'm afraid so. <laughs> Standing on the corner watching all the girls go by? <laughs> Boy, you don't know how close you came. <laughs> uh, you're uh, standing somewhere and you're watching something that isn't plural, but... Uh... Oh, um... Uh, you got a pass. Uh, oh, well, uh, Mr. Treacher. Uh, am I a male? No, you're not. I'm a girl. Oh, you're so lovely, Arthur. <laughs> am I the girl, kind of a girl you would like to know? Oh. <laughs> well, uh, I imagine you would be the type girl that I'd like to know. That yeah. I'm beautiful and soigné and sing. Well, let's, let's not go too far, Arthur, you know. Uh, Am I holding anything? You're holding some attention, I'll say that. <laughs> and, and that is all. Yeah. And, and are we something you like? Uh, oh, what I'm a sorry, thing. now we go to Pat Cow. Am I a girl also? Uh, no, you're not. Uh, I, I, am, I am lower, I have a feeling, than everybody else. Am I kneeling? 
Mm, well, your kneeling, part of you is kneeling, and the other part of you is elbowing. A centaur? A centaur? Yes. I'll talk to you after the show. Yeah. No, you're not a centaur. Uh, well, then, then I am not really... Am, am I, am I, uh, am I alive? Oh, you're alive, all right. Very much alive, and if, you're becoming if, more alive every minute. If, if I'm elbowing, am I doing something to Arthur, who is a lady? I will say that, yes. You are ogling Arthur. Now, uh, I'll give you another clue. Uh, this picture could be titled A Little French Dressing on the Side. <laughs> Is there, um, are we in a specific uh, place? Yes, you are. Is it a bar? No, it's not. Oh. Is it a French bar? <laughs> What's the difference? <laughs> I don't a good area. I don't want to get out. Um, uh, uh, French, French dressing on it. Uh, I never asked you, am I a man? Oh, yes, you did ask me, and I told you you were a very fine man. Oh, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. You're very insecure about this, aren't you, Pat? <laughs> yeah, well, well, it's only really make-believe, you know. <laughs> I haven't spoken to my agent in three days, and you know, I... Um, oh, is Arthur uh, half... I'm sorry, your time is up. Are we three yeah. boys watching Arthur? You're absolutely right. Is Arthur undressing? Or dressing? Is Arthur undressing? No, he's not. Is he undressed? Well, I'll say this, that if what? he were going to undress, it would take a very short while. <laughs> yes, are we in Paris? No, you're not. In Paris. Well, you could be in Paris. Are we watching Arthur's window? Are we? But don't forget, this is a song title, an American song. American song. Oh, oh American you know Paris. this song like a bird. I know you do. Uh, I don't know. I, I like, oh, like a bird. Oh, please. It's not something for the boy. Oh, no. Now, don't take bird for a clue. That wasn't a clue. I just said that. Something for the boy? My matter of speech. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I'm sorry. You have failed miserably. <laughs> you were three men ogling... Arthur Treacher, who portrayed the girl with the itsy-bitsy, teeny-weeny, yellow polka dot bikini. And that's the title of the film. Before we continue with our next game, let's see another kind of interesting picture. Good evening, everybody. This is Dennis James. I just want to say there's going to be lots of fun for me to be in this picture with Jackie Gleason talking to you folks about all the wonderful Kellogg products. So I'd like to suggest right now that you kind of pull up a chair so you're in the picture. See, once you're next to these, I think that you'll want Kellogg's Corn Flakes to bring the best to you each morning, every morning. Most people do. See, this is the best-liked, the world's favorite cereal. It's got the best flavor, too. That's the secret. And it's Kellogg's secret. And when you think about it, it is a secret to make good food taste good. And in Corn Flakes, Kellogg's has it all ready for you. Crisp and fresh, the real thing. A Kellogg's good morning, the best to you each morning. K-E-L-L-O-double good Kellogg's, best to you. So how about it? Have some right after the show tonight and tomorrow morning. Try it real soon, okay? Okay. Gentlemen, we're ready for our next game. Will you show the picture to the folks at home? Will the panel kindly step in? <laughs> now, uh, this, uh, this picture depicts a cultural display. And while three of you are very famous, the other one keeps giving you the brush off. <laughs> now we'll begin with you, Arthur. Uh, am I a man? Yes, you are. Quite a man. I am a man. And uh, 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 am I holding anything? <laughs> you sure are. <laughs> a dangerous weapon? The way things are going, yeah. <laughs> Why is it at Iron Mongers? At where? At an oh, um, hardware store. At an Iron Mongers? Yeah. <laughs> at an hardware store. Yeah. 
so, you know. Hardware store. Please speak in our idiom, because I don't think I am on this. But I mean the hardware store. No, uh, you couldn't buy that. Oh, I'm yeah. sorry, your time is up, and now we get to you, Pat. Is Arthur doing something to me? Don't you no, know? he's not. No, no. Uh, he's not doing anything to me. Am I uh, alive? Am I a human being? Oh, yes, you're a human. Uh, I am human. Am I a woman? No, you're not. You're a man. I'm a man. Am I doing something to somebody else? Well, you've done something to everyone, but you have just finished doing something to someone. <laughs> Let's see you get away with that. <laughs> uh, I am doing something to somebody. Well, you have just finished doing something to someone. Is, is this thing that I'm doing, does it give pleasure to the people I'm doing it to? No, I'm so sorry. I couldn't answer that. Uh, Jan? Uh, are we statues? I told you, this dame is psychic. Yes, you're statues. Uh, and is one of us um, a cleaner or a, a duster or somebody that's cleaning statues? That's right. Um, I'll, I'll give be... you another hint. Huh? You look like a waiter in a pizzeria. <laughs> You're so close, Jan. Um, am I the am I the keeper? I'm sorry, your time is up, and now who? Oh, thank goodness. And we get to you, Pat. Um, uh, is she using the discus? Yes, she is. Uh, I'll. Are there three of us involved in one scene, or... That's th right, three of you involved in one scene. Would it be like three events? Three, uh... Separate, distinct events? Three statues, uh, isn't it? Uh, three, three statues, statues, yes. Three statues, yes. Yeah. I'm the discus thrower. That's then right. Then find out who was Like a mile away thrower or something, and are we all aiming our stuff at her, at Pat Carroll? No, you're not. But we're not? No. It'd be funny, wouldn't it? Oh, yes, it would. <laughs> if she hit you with that pizza, it'd be funny, I'll tell you that. You're close, though, Pat. Yeah, well, I get the feeling I am. You do? Uh, now, uh, we have a few seconds left, Arthur. That, all right. Is, is, is somebody dusting us off? Yes, they are. All right. And this, uh, am I a javelin I thrower? You? No, you're not a javelin thrower. But, oh, one of them is the museum keeper, perhaps? Or That's correct. Yeah. Oh, now you'd like to know which one, wouldn't you? Yes. Yeah. Arthur, you? Arthur, I think I am. Now, remember, I told you, you asked if you were carrying something, and I said, yes, a big deal. Well, I did a big deal because I said javelin thrower, but anyhow. A oh, the pole ball. Oh, what? No. <laughs> How can you carry a pole ball? <laughs> What's the matter with you? <laughs> no, uh, uh, so I, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, your time is up, Jan. Uh, the psychic uh, one. Am I a female statue? No, you, what oh, you said was right. Yes, You're yes, the discus yes. thrower. Oh, I, oh, I forgot. Now, I just try I to say what the rest are. Show? She's a discus thrower. Yeah. Who's the female? Is he David? Is Arthur David? There's no female. Is such kind of associated with this? How did I get mixed up with this? <laughs> now, Jan is a female portraying a male statue, which is the discus thrower. Now, does that give it, you any idea what you are? Well, it's got to be a gift from Cuba. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to give... He's looking for a gift like this, uh... <laughs> Have we got the thinker? Is, is one of us the thinker? You're absolutely right. Now, what is a the other one? A thinker and a thrower? The and thinker? And an agent! <laughs> no. <laughs> no, but sometimes agents look like Arthur does. And the Venus de Milo. Uh, no. Uh, 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 oh, you're so... David! Right. Oh, Aphrodite! No, no, no. Uh, 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 I'm sorry. But I, I must give you credit. You had, uh... You had three quarters of the picture. Arthur is Atlas holding the world. Oh. And the uh, title of the picture was the Metropolitan Museum of Art. Oh. Ladies and gentlemen, next week, our sponsor will be Liggett and Myers. And I'm very happy that they are going to be in the picture with us because they make a fine cigarette that I enjoy a great deal. And I know many of you will enjoy it if you try it. This is it, L&M Filter Cigarettes. Now, I'd like you to know that I was in the picture with L&M long before they were in the picture with me. Of course, this package is important because when you go to buy L&M, you should know what they look like. But this is where the curtain really goes up. Taste. Taste for yourself just how good a filter cigarette can be. L&M is my smoke. 
because I think taste is great. And if I ask you to try it, it's because I think that you're going to like them too. Now, unlock some flavor. The next time, every time, reach for an L&M. They're the greatest. We are ready for our next picture. Show the folks at home. Will the uh, panel kindly step in? Now, this picture portrays a very famous theatrical group. And the clue I might give you is that I can truthfully say you look like loads of fun. <laughs> now, we begin with you, Mr. Harrington. Am I, uh, do I work in this country? Oh, yes. I'm not the Abbey player. No, you're not the Abbey player. Uh, you're more like the baby players. Uh, a theatrical group. Theatrical group. Loads of fun. Have anything to do with films? No, I don't think you've been in pictures. Uh, uh, the circuit. You know, the key thing. Yeah, it's been a circuit connected with what, uh, you have appeared in. Oh, I'm thinking of, I'm, see, I'm thinking of some specific act. That's not the right, uh, tack here. Uh, am I a man? Are we all doing something together? You are. I'm sorry. Are, 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 are we not adults? Are we children? Oh, you're all adults. Very large adults. Oh, we're extra large adults. We're king-size adults. Uh, yes. Yeah, well, queen-size adults. We're women. All four women. You're all four women. Uh, are what we doing? Are we doing it together as a group? You together. are doing it together so nice as a group. Except for one. Uh, one uh, of you it's... looks a little lefty. Oh, lefty. Uh, it, uh, uh, it's what we're doing, dancing. Yes, you are. We are dancing. It is a certain kind of dancing. Uh, yes, it's a particular kind. Uh, is it, uh, would it create, uh, marvelous excitement from the audience, the type of dancing that we do? Well, I would say that it would... I'm sorry, time is up. Well, uh, Arthur. Are we animals? <laughs> well, a lot of people would call you elephants, but I don't think you're animals. <laughs> um, well, then, all right. Uh, are we holding anything? Uh, each other. Each other, and uh, we're not dancing... You are dancing. Are dancing. Are dancing. dancing. Are we dancing? You're dancing. Are we dancing? Are we dancing? Uh, are we dancing in rhythm? Well, uh, all except one. She has some other ideas. Oh, but are we on our toes? No, you're on your heels. You're on my toes. Now, yes, I know, but I couldn't help it. Now we get to Miss Sterling. Uh, are there only four members of this troupe? That's true. Is the whole troop? Oh, and we're women. You said you said loads of. Uh, are we? Are we very heavy? Yes, you are. She oh, is gorgeous. Uh, uh, oh, there are four ladies that, That's that right. uh, are four very ladies. heavy, and very I, heavy. but I'm afraid I don't know their names. Oh, the Broadway show, my four ladies. <laughs> <laughs> they appeared on Broadway for a very short time. But oh, they... uh, hang on, brothers. Brown and Barry, the four ladies in the circus. The elephants in the circus. Four lady elephants in the four, circus. No, 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 four no, 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 four no, 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 wait a minute. The Peter sisters? The no. Sisters. The, the what sisters? The brother sisters. The brother sisters. <laughs> <laughs> Is that an act that goes forward and backwards? <laughs> <laughs> Watson's beat thrust. Wait a minute, you're absolutely Wait, right. Billy Watson's beat thrust is the big piece. We're ready for our next picture. Let's show it to the folks at home. Now, will you take up the screen? Step in, panel. Step in, panel. <laughs> This is, uh, the category that this is in is a scene taken from a piece of famous literature. And the clue I will give you is, uh, if you don't lock your front door, this kind of thing will happen every time. We'll begin with you, Ben. Uh, and am I a man? No, you're not. And I'm a woman, then. That's correct. Well, I, you're female. I, I am female. 
Uh, well, what do you mean? I am just female? Uh, this doesn't Isn't that enough to be just female? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> want to start a whole thing about this? Well, I'm just female. Am I dressed in a particular way? Uh, now we go to Arthur. Um, am I human? No, you're not. Uh, animal. Yes, you are. A female animal. Um, no, I'm you're a, not a female animal. I'm a no, male no, animal. no, no. Don't take anything for granted, Arthur. Oh. No, I don't take it for granted. Um, uh, now, all right, now you put me off. Now, hold on. Uh, you know now, do you? Well, let's get back to Nick. How many shows? We go on a chance. Am I a female? Uh, no, you're not. Is uh, a male? Yes, you are. A I'm small a, male. A, a little boy. Uh, a little, baby. little baby. male, a I little said. Man. I, am I an animal? Yes, you are. Am I a, a puppy or a kitten? No, you're neither. Am I uh, an animal? You don't mean a fowl. I, I'm not a fowl. No, not there's a nothing fowl, foul about you, Jan. <laughs> I'm sorry, we go to Pat. Uh, you said this was some literature, right? That's correct. Have anything to do with Shakespeare? <laughs> no, nothing to do with Shakespeare. Does anything to do with the Pied Piper of Hamlin? No. We're animals. Yeah, yeah well, it's one of... Oh, Jackie, does it yes. have anything to do with the door? And a hop and a cough and I blow your house down would it be the three pigs and the wolf. What was that? <laughs> If you don't lock your door, then these people will get in, and you huff and you puff the three little pigs with three little pigs in the wolf. And, and pigs can be seen. Oh, oh, shut your mouth. That isn't it at all. <laughs> no, it's not it. Sorry, our time is up. You were Goldilocks and the three bears. Oh. As you know, friends, we don't play this game to win prizes. But you'll be ahead when you listen to this. Hi, this is Dennis James again. Say, do you want a do-it-yourself breakfast kit? All right, then put Kellogg's Variety Package on the table. See, this is the new and bigger assortment, America's favorite collection of cereals. It's the best to you and you and you each morning the way you like it. Look at your choices. Ten fresh individual servings. All the great grains, corn, rice, oats, wheat, a delicious variety of flaked, popped, puffed, and some already sweetened cereals. K-E-L-L-O-Double-Good, Kellogg's best to you. So how about picking up a couple of Kellogg's variety packs real soon? Okay? Okay. Good wishes and good health. The best to you each morning, fresh from Kellogg's of Battle Creek. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to thank the panel, Miss Pat Carroll, Mr. Arthur Preacher, Mr. Jan Sterling, Mr. Pat Harrington. I would also like to say, ladies and gentlemen, that you've been a very fine audience. You have braved a blizzard, and you were just great. Thank you. Good night. See you next week. Cast off the ties of the prosaic world. Give your imagination free reign. Ahead lies the Twilight Zone, next on most of these stations. L&M Filter Cigarettes presents... Jackie Gleason. In what will probably prove to be a very unusual program. And now, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Jackie Gleason.
that's good coffee. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I uh, think you'll notice that there is no panel tonight. <laughs> As a matter of fact, there's nothing here except the orchestra and myself. I'd like to modify that. There is one other thing. We have a creed tonight. And the creed is honesty is the best policy. Now, this program could be the most fascinating you'll ever watch. I know this, that it's the first of its kind. And could very easily be the last. Well, I said that we didn't have a panel or anything like that. We do have a premise. And the premise is this. Last week, we did a show called You're in the Picture. That laid. <laughs> without a doubt. The biggest bomb. <laughs> telling you, friends, that I've seen bombs in my day. <laughs> this would make the H-bomb look like a two-inch salute. <laughs> in our neighborhood, we'd call the atom bomb a scissor. <laughs> this was... Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> and to show you the element, uh, what, what luck plays, the element of luck in success, now, I wasn't supposed to be here last week. I was going out of town. I was going to play some golf, and I was going to watch Palmer make that 12 he got, you know, on that hole. And somebody said to me, how would you like to do a show? And they told me about this thing, and I stayed around to do it. Now, I, I didn't have to be here. I could have been somewhere having a nice cruise on a Portuguese ship or something. <laughs> As a matter of fact, if I had been on that ship, I wouldn't be here tonight. <laughs> Ooh. This is a new coffee called Chock Full of Booze. <laughs> Before we go any further to discuss this... Uh, catastrophe that took place last week. <laughs> and I'll get some dirtier words to explain it later. I would like to tell you that tonight our show is being brought to you by none other friends than L&M Filter Cigarettes. My choice for flavor. Now, unless you're smoking L&Ms, all you can do is imagine how good they taste. How much great flavor you can get from a filter cigarette. Not from just one L&M or two or a whole pack. But every time you light up, every time, L&M gives you that flavor. Now, I think you'll agree. So try my smoke, friends. Unlock some flavor. The next time, every time, reach for an L&M because they're the greatest. Now, back to this subject. <laughs> you know, a lot of people might ask, how is it possible for a group of trained people in show business, if this happened in a hospital, <laughs> you know, if some doctors botched up a thing like this, this is the end, they carry him out, that's all, Charlie. <laughs> but here we are, all trained people in show business, and the best that you can get, this is, this, no kidding, these are the finest people. And uh, I imagine that in the group we had, there were about a group of 20, uh, they had combined experience of about 300 years. <laughs> imagine this. And they put this show on, you're in the picture. Well, now I've got to tell you why a thing like that happened. Whoa, that's good coffee. I mean, that's... <laughs> 
Let me explain this to you. The facts of show business are this. Show business is a very strange and intangible endeavor. Now, for instance, put your, yourself in the pla a place of a bank president. Now, suppose a guy walked into you when you were the president of a bank, and he said to you, I want to borrow a million dollars because I'm going to put on a picture with no stars in it. He said, and the plot of the picture is this. An ugly butcher up in the Bronx can't get a date. And it's going to win the Academy Award. <laughs> well, immediately, you know, you step on the emergency bell and uh, you hermetically seal the whole bank. And in 30 seconds, Bellevue was there with the straitjackets akimbo, you know. <laughs> But oddly enough, there was a guy who did borrow some money from a bank, who did put on a picture without any stars in it, and it was about an ugly butcher in the Bronx who couldn't find a date, and the name of the picture was Marty. Now, up to now, it's made about an eight million dollars. So how can you tell, you know? Now, that's a stupid plot that you walk in with. But let's look at the other end of the road. A couple of years ago, about 10 years ago, there was a show, a guy had an idea for a show. He said, here's what we're going to do. He says, we're going to put on a show called Keep Off the Grass. It'll be about Central Park. He said, and we'll get a historian that knows all the funny things that happen in Central Park. And you know, friends, that there's been some funny things. He says, we'll get two geniuses to write the music, and they did. They got Jimmy McHugh and Howard Deeds. They said, we'll get the master choreographer of all times, Balanchine. He'll put on the dances. They said, then we'll get stars. We'll get Jimmy Durante, Jane Froman, Ray Bolger, and Ilka Chase. And they did. And they put this show on. I was in it, friends. It closed so fast, I got caught in the door. <laughs> The intangible, yeah, that isn't the worst flop I've I was in worse than that. <laughs> I was in a little uh, legitimate show in summer stock. This thing was so bad that opening night it closed during intermission. <laughs> this is how bad this was. <laughs> but, you know, there's... Now, for instance, when they came to me with this ID, you're in the picture. I got to take the blame for this because a guy walked in and he demonstrated. I was sitting with my agent, you know, and a couple of the people that belong to the agency that I'm uh, employed by or uh, guided by. <laughs> Those dirty run. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, wait, if I, I don't mean it. They're all in it. Take my word for it. They didn't. <laughs> and uh, anyway, this guy came in and he demonstrated this game. And I want to tell you, we fell down. You know, it was a, a board, as you saw last week, and everybody stuck their head in and they had to guess what the thing was. Well, we were hilarious. And it got contagious. We were calling in stenographers and said, hey, look at this, what we... <laughs> People were walking down the corridor with packages. We were pulling them in. Look at this thing that we got here. Now, you can't imagine how this built up, in our opinion, as a great show. It just caught on. Now, I gotta show you, uh, for you people who didn't see the show last week, who weren't that fortunate, <laughs> I gotta show you what it was like. Now, uh, will you bring out the tableau, please? Bring that thing out here. Just bring it up. You'll notice, ladies and gentlemen, that the stagehands have their back turned to the audience. Now, this is understandable. They don't want to be identified with this thing. <laughs> They have wives and children <laughs> and are respected members of their community and they don't want to have it. But this is it. Now, if you looked at that, wouldn't you say that was funny? Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha! Maybe it's, it's unfair to show you this. You see, somebody has to stick that. Let me show you when you put your head through the hole how funny it is. Watch this! <laughs> Up back here. Just pull it down. There you are. Look at that thing. <laughs> Well, that's what I mean, you know. 
<laughs> Maybe it was because they had the cook over at uh, General Otis Corporation stick her head in there or something. I don't know. But it was very funny when we were watching it. Now, you would think that an audience who watches a show for a half hour would walk out of the theater uh, memorizing the highlights of the show. They didn't even walk out of here humming the scenery. <laughs> but aside from that, we, uh, for instance, we got a call right after the show. And uh, it was very embarrassing. It was the Russian embassy. <laughs> they wanted a copy of this tape to show in the Kremlin. Believe me, if they show this, you'll tell the truth. <laughs> they had a bomb like this one, too. We'd listen. But Castro has a new slogan since we had this show. It's called, Yankee, go stick your head in a hole. <laughs> You take, for instance, the reviews that we got on the show. This was really rough. And I'll tell you why. You have no idea what an actor goes through when he gets up the next morning and has to open that paper and look at what they wrote about him when he knows he's laid an egg. <laughs> and it was especially bad for me because we did the show on Friday. And at Friday, all the television columns are in bed. So I had to wait till Monday. Now this provides bad temper, ulcers, and a third degree hangover. <laughs> which was terrible. Now, you can say things about critics. You can say, well, what does a critic know? If he knew anything, he'd put on a hit show himself if he knows it all, you know. And you can say the same thing about ratings. Funny thing about actors, they like ratings when they're high, and they hate critics when they wrap them. Well, I'm of the school that if a critic did know about how to put on a show, he would. But I'm still on the critic's side because you don't have to be Alexander Graham Bell to pick up the phone and find out it's dead. <laughs> so, before I read you the reviews, I'd like to tell you another thing an actor does. He tries to find out who's to blame for this. He's not. That's a sense. <laughs> so I'm sitting there grumbling to myself after the thing. Uh, who's the plan for that? I tried to find out whether it was the guy that uh, came up with the idea. It wasn't him because I went along with him, calling in the girls and everything. Look at this. And uh, it wasn't the producer because I had a little hand in that, you know. I'm very sneaky. I get in everything. The director put the show on pretty good. The writers, I wrote some of the stuff, so I have nothing to complain at. I finally found out the guy to blame for this whole thing. Just before the show goes on, there's a guy that says, You're on the air. <laughs> that is the dirty talk. <laughs> Move over, Castro. <laughs> no. Uh, before we go any further, I'd like everybody, to, I'll tell you more about this thing, but everybody stand back right now because we have some big news for you. Ellen has found the secret that the flavor in the filter cigarette. If you know the missing word in the L&M jingle, you may be a winner in L&M's $169,000 sweepstakes. First prize worth $40,000. Includes $15,000 cash, a 61 Thunderbird hardtop, and this $20,000 Westinghouse Total Electric Vacation Home. Second prize, a bundle of money, $10,000 cold cash. 23rd prizes, each one a 61 Falcon two-door sedan. And 1,000 fourth prizes, famous Argus movie cameras. To be eligible for the big drawing, just fill in the missing word in the L&M jingle. Complete rules on how to enter in L&M magazine advertisements or where L&Ms are sold. Enter L&M's $169,000 sweepstakes now. Now, there's a chance to win a bundle. But win or not, give yourself the big prize in smoking. The good tobacco taste of L&M. It can't be beat, friends. So unlock some flavor. 
Reach for the greatest, Alan M. I didn't know about that extra pot you had there. <laughs> I'll read you something later that said about the band, which is a riot. <laughs> Another thing, I told you about the guy that says you're on the air. Well, any of you people who have visited a television show know about the guy at the end of the show that goes like this to tell you, you know, that there's no time left and to get off. Last week, the guy used a real mic. <laughs> Another funny thing about putting on a flop show. <laughs> and I wish I wasn't an expert in all these things. <laughs> but after the show is over, you usually stand there. You know, you're the star, and they run up to you, and they say, Oh, Gleason, you were gorgeous. Oh, you were right. I died laughing. <laughs> Last week, nothing. <laughs> I'm standing there alone. <laughs> like I had eczema from head to foot. It was beautiful. <laughs> so after a little while of standing around and nobody saying anything, I started to ask some questions. So I walked up to one of the stage hands and I said, uh, well, Charlie, how'd you like the show? <laughs> he said, boy, you look thin on a monitor. <laughs> This is it, folks, when they say that. <laughs> Another guy said uh, to me, he said, you know, the curtain didn't stick once like it did this afternoon. <laughs> and I went up to another guy, and he says, we got off the air right on time. <laughs> right on time. And the only compliment I received is a guy walked up to me, he said, the commercials were great. <laughs> and that was wrong, because another guy said they were too short. <laughs> But these are the things that happen. Uh, oh, right after the show, my associate, Jack Philbin, came up to me. And he says, uh, I don't know if, I don't know what to think of this. There's a guy on the phone that wants to sponsor a hunk of this show. And after I heard these things, like you're thin on a monitor and everything, I said, uh, well, he must be a nut or something. He says, no, he sounds sincere. So I went to the phone. I says, hello. He says, this place. And I said, yep, pal, who is this? He says, I'd like to sponsor a little piece of the show. I said, well, what product do you manufacture? He says, Brand X. Ah! <laughs> this is the truth. Now, after a show, after a show, especially like the one we did last week, you want to get out and get somewhere. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> And if you have an armed guard, that's good, too, you know, but you want to get out. So we all went to a restaurant, my associates and people connected with the show, and uh, a restaurant you would ordinarily go to eat in, but we didn't. <laughs> we, I ordered a roast double scotch and somebody else had a boiled vodka. And after we had about 30 or 50 of these real steamers, <laughs> We began to think it over. And with the glow of the booze, the show got better, you know. <laughs> One guy says, you gotta admit it was a cold night. <laughs> Another guy says, yeah. And he says, don't forget, a week ago, it was Friday the 13th. <laughs> oh, beautiful, excuse me. Then some guy said, look, he said, let's face it, we were following a tough show, the inaugural. <laughs> said, That's on all day with the marching and everything. He said, you can't follow that. <laughs> I said, you know, come to think of it, you're right. I said, they had a misfortune during the inaugural. I said, as Cardinal Cushing was making the invocation, the lectern started to smoke. Remember it went on fire? I said, that was their misfortune. I said, it should happen to us that we had a misfortune where everything burned up. <laughs> and we could have also used a couple of card Cardinal Cushing's bread. <laughs> but I knew that we were finished because when I went home to the hotel, I opened the window to look out and see if it was still snowing. And they had the nets up. <laughs> Now, 
before we go on with this and before we continue any further, let's pause for a moment for a few words from Dennis James about one of Kellogg's fine breakfast foods. Hi, this is Dennis James. I have here a delicious breakfast of particular interest to anybody watching his weight. Here we are, the new Special K breakfast planned by dietitians to give you the complete protein you need first thing in the morning, but only 240 calories. Now this is the combination, Kellogg's Special K with skim milk, makes a high protein, low calorie breakfast possible. See, an ounce of Special K with four ounces of skim milk supplies the kind of protein that keeps you going strong right up to lunchtime. A good start on your day's protein requirement too. Now here is the new Special K breakfast with the Special K and skim milk. You can have a teaspoon of sugar, a four ounce glass of orange or tomato juice or half a grapefruit, and either black coffee or tea. And there you have it, delicious, quick, substantial breakfast with only 240 calories. So how about it? Why don't you give the new Special K breakfast a try, okay? Okay. <laughs> You know, ladies and gentlemen, the reason I can come out and joke about this kind of a thing is because uh, I know that you can't kid the public. And on top of that, I've been in show business a long time, and this isn't my first flop. I gotta tell you about the world's greatest flop that I was in. This uh, contains all the dreams of an actor and all of the things you, you think are gonna be wonderful that happen to you. And it starts like this. I was working at a joint called the 18 Club on 52nd Street. The same time I was doubling at another club in Queens called the Queens Terrace. And that was a club you had to fight pretty good to work there as a master of ceremonies. But anyway, I went on for the first show at the 18 Club and Jack Warner was in the audience of Warner Brothers Studios and I didn't know this. And I left immediately because I had to get in the car and rush to Queens to do the second show. Now, I had found out this later, that Warner had gone up to Freddie Lamb, who was the guy that was running the 18 Club, a fine guy, and who was my manager, because he had bought me a tuxedo. <laughs> <laughs> and if you think that wasn't a nice gesture, you should have seen me in those days. Well, anyway, he went up to Freddie Lamb, he said, this kid here is a riot, we gotta have him, we're starting a picture in two weeks, and he's gotta be out there. Freddie Lamb says, all right. He says, but let's not rush about this thing. Now, what do you want to give the kid? And uh, Jack Warner said, $85 a week. He says, right, you got him. <laughs> now, <laughs> anyway, I come back to the 18 Club, and Freddie Lamb says, well, pal, you're in pictures. And he told me the story. Well, I was never more thrilled in my life. You know, I was a, a young kid, a ham bone of all times, with a lot of guts and very little talent. And this, to me, was the tops of everything. So a week later, they see me down to the train. We're all going pretty good. And Freddie Lamb gives me $150 spending money to last me for the trip and the few days that I have to wait until my first paycheck comes. Well, I get in the train and I'm dreaming. Oh, oh Clark Gable, move over. <laughs> We finally get to Chicago, and if you know anything about the trains that go to Chicago, at, you arrive in Chicago 9 o'clock in the morning, and the train lays over there till about 4 in the afternoon, so you have to go somewhere. So I went to Enrici's restaurant, where you have coffee, and I met the guys. Red Skelton was there, Danny Thomas, they were all working in town, and I got talking to them, then we went and had a couple of drinks, then I called up the train to see if there was a train leaving tomorrow that I could get on, and they said yes and I watched their shows at night. We went to a gambling joint and I lost all the money. Now I got on the train and after paying the, the uh, porter for my bags, I had exactly $4.25 left and two days on this train to California. Now the guy is going through the train with the bell, bing bong, bing bong. <laughs> all for lunch. <laughs> I'm not worried about the lunch. I'm as dry as toast, you know. <laughs> so I figured there's something I have to do so I don't starve to death. And I got off the train at the first stop and I bought a whole box of baby roots. <laughs> you know, little candies. For two days, I ate baby roots with the bing bong, bing bong. <laughs> 
When I got off the train, I was loaded with pimples and despair. <laughs> trying to meet me, he said to me, what studio do you want to go to? I said, the Brown Derby restaurant. <laughs> anyway, well, I'll have to tell you the end of the, uh, the story right after our next commercial. Now, as I told you, tonight our show is brought to you by L&M. And when I ask you to try my cigarette, L&M, I ask you to try them for only one reason, taste. Really good tobacco taste that gives you pleasure. And is there anything better than pleasure in a cigarette? Believe me, I've tried all brands. And if I had my cigarettes made to order, I'd still settle for L&M. And I think you will too. So unlock some flavor, friends. Reach for an L&M. Now... Now, before finishing the story... Could I have another cup of coffee, please? <laughs> finish. The sole survivor. <laughs> we had four of these when we were going good last week. <laughs> anyway, I made the picture. It was called Navy Blues. And it was a pretty good picture. Jack Galley were in it, uh, was in it. Uh, Jack Oakey, Martha Ray, Ann Sheridan, Jack Carson. They were all splendid. But I had the kind of a part, like if there were a big group of sailors and they said, let's get on a boat, I'd say, yeah, let's get on a boat. And we all run on. Then if they said, let's get off the boat, I'd say, yeah, let's get off the boat. We'd all run off. <laughs> well, we did this picture, and I couldn't wait till it came out. And it came out and played at the Warner Brothers Theater on Hollywood Boulevard, and I went to see it. And I came out, and I was pretty dejected. And I called up Jack Haley, who was a good friend of mine then and still is. And I said, Jack, I just saw the picture. He says, well, how are you in it? I said, I look like somebody watching the picture being made. <laughs> now, that's not such a funny story, but believe me, it really hurt here. But I have learned through just such... Uh, are you saying 30 till we're finished or what? Yeah? Well, let me tell you something. This isn't uh, a requiem for a heavyweight. I'm coming back next week. I don't know what we're gonna do. But take my word for it. Tune in on the next chapter, because this might be the greatest soapless opera you've ever seen. I would like to close, I would like to close with this little poem. If I am in an easy chair with not a problem, not a care, should some dear faithful friend appear and tell me of a great idea, a TV show that seems a beaut, <laughs> I'll smack him right in the snoot. Ah!